Right, finally, hopefully, fingers crossed, we are about to embark on the final, final little section of this rather large watercolour that I've been working on now for about five weeks on and off. Um, it would not normally take me this long. Uh, there were two weeks totally written off by my back, which was awful and of course i had an awful lot of trouble with the internet connection in the other studio but that seems to be solved now so fingers crossed we are going to be okay i am trying my very best <laughs> to sort out this overhead camera which means that i keep being in different positions it's <laughs> it's not a webcam it's actually a mobile phone and it's held in place by a mobile phone stand that's clipped over the top of the monitor which is really good to be perfectly honest it works very very well except for the fact that the angle that I've got it at it keeps falling off so I'm trying to compensate for this with a little bit of solitude <laughs> you wouldn't believe the things that I'm doing here the Heath Robinson um, sort of stuff that I'm doing to make this work. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we're okay. Where are we? Well, let's have a little look. There it is. There's the picture. And as you can see, most of it is done. I did a, a, an extra little video last night. I hope you saw it. It's there for you to see if you haven't seen it yet. Um, let me just turn the, uh, excuse me, I just need to turn the, the chat on. I just realised I haven't turned the chat on. There we go. Um, oh, just a minute, I've got someone at the door. Hold on a second. Excuse me for for, uh, for that. I Amazon delivery, <laughs> not even for me. But there we go. So where are we at? Um, yes, yeah, that's right. Last night I I put the uh, the upright post in here that's uh, holding up the the golf sign, and and I did a video for that. So it is online if you want to go and have a look at it. It's on, it's definitely on Facebook. Not, sorry, it's definitely on YouTube. For some reason, the videos that I did yesterday didn't find their way onto Facebook. I don't know why. Um, hopefully this one is going out live on Facebook. If you are watching this on Facebook, it would be great if you would actually tell me in the, uh, in the chat window uh, whether or not you are on Facebook and whether or not it's actually working on Facebook. But for some reason, yesterday's didn't go out on Facebook. They are available to watch on YouTube. I know that because I've been in and checked all that out. So I would recommend that you go to uh, YouTube and, and watch them if you want to. And I did one, just a half hour one, about doing this post and the way I've done this post. Uh, but you might find interesting if, if you're a if you're a painter yourself um, or if you're learning you might find that one interesting um, where we're at now is that we have just this little bit of sign to finish off underneath because I noticed that I hadn't um, removed the masking on it so it's still white so I've got to 
not forget to touch that up. And specifically, of course, it's Lulu herself that we are going to be working on today. The windows are done. There is masking still in place, which will need to be removed um, and just maybe titivated a little bit to sort it out. The masking is on round here to protect these things, and there's masking on the wheel rims and the hubs. So basically, what we got what we've got to do is to put the paintwork on. And for that, we need to make an unusual colour. Lulu is a, a particular shade of green that is very pale. I would describe it, if anything, as toothpaste green, if that makes sense to anybody. It, or maybe... I would describe it as, um, yeah, if, if I bring this, you can probably see. Now it looks a bit, that looks blue, doesn't it? It isn't blue. It's very difficult to get um, digital imagery to show up the right colour. Uh, but if you can see there, that looks blue. As it, It's getting greener as it gets closer to the camera, I suppose. Um, but it is actually, oh, see that's, ah. Now tilted it, you can see. Can you see now? It's gone the colour it should be. Um, it's strange, isn't it? As I move it that way, it goes blue. And as I tilt it away, it goes green. This is strange technology. technology. But it, it is a pale, almost institutional. Does that make any sense to anybody? The colour that they used to paint hospitals in the mid, mid uh, early and mid 20th century. It's slightly yellowy, but it's very pale. And so I've got to mix that colour. And to some degree, I'm also taking a little bit of a gamble because I am working from a photograph that has been sent to me by Danny, who lives in Georgia, which is miles and thousands of miles away from me across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and I've received it digitally. I am looking at it at the moment on an Amazon Fire 8 HD um, tablet. And it looks one particular colour. If I change over to... Um, let me see if I can actually show you. Just don't let me do add um, browser. Okay. Um, browser source. If I change that bear with me a second here i'm trying to do something so you can actually see where is where's the original there it is no it's fighting with the oh, it's fighting with the stream here for some reason Pull it down, bring it back. Hi Raj, thank you. It is coming. I'm just having a little bit of trouble trying to get the there we are, that get the browser image onto the screen for you so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um let's go back to uh Go back to OBS. Ah, okay. Set the URL of the page you'd like to display. Let's get that. Copy. And back again. Into uh, OBS. 
Christ. Let's see if that works. Click OK. No, we're not going to do that. Because that ain't going to work that way. Hmm. Okay, let's forget about that. You'll see it as I paint it. Basically, it's an odd colour. It's an odd green. So I'm going to have to try and mix that colour. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error. I'm going to start off with some manganese blue, which is a very much a... Let's see if I can put some onto a piece of paper that you can see here. There you are. That is very much, um, it's almost cyan, I would say, isn't it? It's slightly leans towards the turquoise, but it's um, it's uh, a good, close to primary, I would say, blue. Now let's just add to that. The nice thing is that both these colours are transparent. So we shouldn't get any problem with graining or any problem with the, with the opacity or anything. Now that's gone, I would say that's gone to green. Now, so let's add more blue. And let's stop. Let's put some of that on and dab it off and see what it goes. It's sort of going to be actually not far off, I don't think. It's got to go on in very, very thin washes. Yes, I probably can, actually. Thank you, Rod, for that suggestion. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, this is going to do it. This is going to do it. If you see that, it's a pale green. A bit more blue in it, maybe. Let's see if I can do that for you. Um, save and adjust. Yes, add image. Okay, browse. Um,
There we go. There we go. That's got the got it. Now you can see on the screen here the color of the original VW. And it is You see this is this is where the problem comes. This is where I have to explain things. I don't know what colour you're seeing on your screen. I've got a tablet down here that has it in one colour and I have a picture on my monitor here that has it a deeper bluier shade of green. So I don't know which one is actually the right colour. So I'm going to have to just go with my instincts and go for something that is probably going to be as near as damn it. And there's no way, really, of Danny sending me a, a photograph digitally where I can actually guarantee that this is going to be exactly the same colour as Lulu. So I'm going to just have to go with it. Anyway, so there's Lulu. There's the, the bit that we're working on. Okay. So let's get rid of Lulu for a second. So there's the overall picture. Bit of a false start today, isn't it? I'm sort of messing about a bit. I do apologise. But there we go. That's what we're working on. We now have the chat displayed. And you can see me in the corner. Hello there. Right. I am going to go with the picture that is on my tablet. Uh, and hope that that works. I've tested it on a swab. Uh, by putting it on and taking it off, you'll see that if I apply it just raw, it looks probably about the right sort of colour. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Definitely green anyway. So let's start with, let's get a piece of trusty old kitchen roll. Yeah, I know what you're saying. That's the way I can, and I'm sure that's the way it looks on your monitor. And... This is the age-old problem that we have with absolutely everything, is that on one piece of equipment it will look one colour, and on another piece of equipment it will look another colour. And this is this is the difficulty. The only way I could guarantee that it would be the right colour was if Danny actually took a photograph, printed it off, and posted it to me. See, there's a, a more bluey version of it, but I don't think that's it. Actually, it might be more like it. I think that one. Right, whoever just put that on there. Yeah? Warfix, X Warfix, X whatever your bloody name is. 
I am just about to block you forever. You cheeky get. I am sorry, but, you know, if you send me your website, I'll come to put adverts for my bloody business all over it. Would you like that? Now sod off. Honestly, these people make me mad. Honestly. Right, anyway, let's get back to business. No, you can't. I wonder, hold on. Let's see if I can do this. Right, okay. Let's go with let's go with the side. Let's just go for it. <laughs> I've already done that. I've just done it. I just blocked him. But I, I just they just irritate me. They just irritate me. It happened yesterday that a different name, but as soon as I signed on, boom! Oh, advert, advert, advert. Sod off. All these scammers that are just absolutely everywhere at the moment, they just drive me mad. They've realised that they can be wherever they want to be in the world and they can just, I mean, they're just criminals, basically, most of them. If they were in one country, they would be in jail. But because they can be wherever they want to be in the world, hiding behind VPNs and all sorts of different things, then they just just get on with it and it makes me makes me rather mad. The ones that get me are the the, are the ones that are basically targeting Targeting people who have not got, or who are vulnerable. Let's put it that way. They're targeting old people. They're targeting people that aren't too bright. I mean, there's this whole thing with, um, you know, when when all this first started, and we used to get these. Emails that were from places like Nigeria and everything, and they were all like badly, bad English and badly spelt and and all that sort of thing. And we thought, well, oh, gosh, you know what? The, why are they bothering? It's not, it's so obvious because it's so badly spelt. And so they had a go. They had a time 
where they didn't spell it badly, where they didn't and their English got better and all that sort of thing. But then they realised that they were they were actually getting people replying to their rubbish um, scams that were actually just just going to suss them out very, very easily, very, very quickly. And um, so they went back to misspelling everything again because they realised that if people were going to answer their scams, even if they misspelled everything and their English was bad, it, it meant that the people that were responding were not that clever and were more likely to be vulnerable to their deception. It's evil. There are some horrible people in this world. It's, and do you know, I would rather have Ten real followers, then a load, of, then you know, thousands of of people who are basically not interested in any way in what I do. Pointless. You know, I I um, I started out when I started out doing this this business. You can call it a business. Um, I started out on on Twitter. Really, I had Facebook, but the, most of my work came from Twitter. And I started from scratch, and I and I quickly got to about. 500 sort of followers on Twitter and all my business and in the, in the first project that I did all came from Twitter and it worked really really well and then I thought well I haven't got enough followers I'm milking the same cow all the time so to speak and so I I did a thing a method that I saw on the internet to actually increase your followers and it wasn't buying anything it wasn't using any money or anything like that can't remember exactly how it was at the moment but it it worked and pretty soon I had, which is basically what I've got now, I had about 6,000 or so followers. From those 6,000 followers, I got less work than I got when I had 100. And, uh, and now I remember reading once and it's saying, actually, out of your Twitter, not Twitter, What's it called? Out of your... Yeah, Twitter, sorry. Out of your Twitter followers, a huge percentage of them are bots. And I just thought, great. <laughs> and now, I post everything I do to Twitter, but I, I, I never get anything from it. Now there's an interesting thing. On the screen there, you can see the, the picture that I'm painting. On the monitor that I am looking at to see this picture, the paint that I've just put on that van looks blue.
on the actual painting in front of me, it is most obviously green. Strangely enough. Actually, no. I don't think that's far off, actually. Uh, I don't think that is far off. I'll just let that wash. That's a deep comment there, uh, Raj. That is that social media is built around parasocial interaction. It's all about showing and giving attention, to be honest. You are totally and absolutely 100% right. It is... Uh, do you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I am trying to reach people with my painting, with my work... I would not bother at all with social media. I really wouldn't. I I I don't use it nowadays for anything other other than my painting because I I find it so toxic. I really do. I I find it so nasty a lot of the time. And, and, it's, and I don't really know that's horrible to think that that's, that that's the way it is. So I, I, I sort of been trying to get sort of Instagram sort of sorted out so that, I, you know, I could maybe reach people with my painting via Instagram but uh, I don't know it's a strange game 
The whole thing is a strange game. And you see all these young people just desperately trying to become influencers, trying to make it on Instagram and make it online. What it comes down to in the end, what they're trying to do is to become walking advertisements for commercial interests, basically. And that's it. Right, I shall now let that dry before I do anything else because uh, the next stage involves taking off the uh, the masking it is an absolute dumb game it's um, I don't know I am, um, oh gosh, what would I say? In a way, I'm grieve, <laughs> I mourn for the early days of the internet. Now, when I first started going on the internet, which would be just before the millennium, it would be about 1999, 98, 99, and, you know, there really wasn't that much going on. And what was going on was very much social. It was very much people interacting with one another on a, on a much more real level. And the commercial world hadn't woken up to the internet at all. Now, you couldn't do half the things on it that you can do now. Nowhere near. I mean, there's no way I could be doing what I'm doing here back then. Back then, on my SX486 chip or whatever it was, the the only uh, graph the only video that I could run was literally in a two inch window of a of a CD of a CD ROM. It, you know, it, you just wouldn't do it. But now, of course, we can do all this, and this is magic and it's wonderful. And you know, it, you can get there's so much good stuff on the internet, but then there's all the rest of it is just ruining it. And the more corporations and ads that you get on it, influencing or the influencing people, the worse the content gets. Drives me mad. I mean, like I say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a musician. And I love the fact that I can go online and, I, and there are people that I follow that are musicians and they demonstrate stuff and they put out their new music and all that sort of thing and and it's great it really is great and then you see these others the then you see these guitarists especially who are demonstrating these guitars and saying how wonderful these guitars are, how wonderful their space equipment is, and all that sort of thing. And you realise that actually, the show, the con, it's been the, the show has been sponsored by the people who make the guitar. And you think it's just an advert. You're just being an advert. I don't know. Bit of a rant, I suppose shouldn't take it so seriously but it, it is irritating <laughs> yeah materialism 101 capitalism basically that's what it comes down to in the end capitalism 101 
let's uh, let's do the sign. Let's sort that out. I'm just going to dull it down, basically. The, 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 the bit that I'm talking about is that there's the, the sign that's under the canopy. You can see it, it's a red sign with, with um, it's, it's another Coca-Cola sign, basically. <laughs> you know, here's me going on about materialism and I'm painting loads of Coca-Cola signs. Um, but basically, it's this this sign here which I'm just gonna I'm just gonna knock it back really there's not really much point to me trying to put detail on it because I can't read the detail on the sign so why sh why should why should we attract the eye to it too much just got to basically ha bring it underneath the canopy darken it down a bit add a bit of that'll do nobody's going to be paying for any much attention anyway Still a little bit bright, probably, actually. Let's get a bit of this. That's better. Oh, that's better. Right, there's some masking to take off on the upper part of the the van masking on the windows that we can take off now because that's all dry from yesterday There's orange crush, that's right. But I ain't going to bother to write no orange crush. Nobody cares that much what it says. You have to be very, very, very careful not to not to leave any of the latex behind there we go take it off the wheels that is dry enough let's go for it let's take it off the the lights and off the grill. And the highlight, which we'll have to have some pop back onto it. And off the, the, the bumper. I don't know what you call it in India. We call it a bumper bar. The Americans call it a fender. Just a little bit left there, just get a Ah, oh, you call it a bumper as well. Of course, you've got a 
You had the English occupying you for goodness knows how many years, didn't you? So you probably got a lot of your English that way. We, uh, my ancestors, I'm afraid, were not particularly enlightened. Whenever you take the masking off, it's never as smooth as it could be. Even if you put it on with a ruler and a, uh, and a, a mapping pen, as I often do, it's never 100% perfect. So you've always got to go around and do some, do some tidying up. the edges of things. Just realise this position that I uh, that I'm putting myself put, puts me very close to the microphone so I apologise if I'm blowing your head off. I shall talk quieter while I'm in this position. There we go. There is definitely left on there. Right, let's try and let's take this down a notch. It's a highlight on the paintwork, it isn't white. It's pale green. Just taking it down a little bit too much there. So, and get a bit of the uh, Thanks very much, uh, Roger. It's nice to... Uh, <laughs> we've ruled you, yeah. True. Um, anyway, it's very nice to have you around again. Have a good day yourself. Have a good evening, I imagine, where you are. And uh, I'll see you again soon. And By the way, I, I, I think I've got finally cracked the whole tag thing. So I think I should have my all my tags should be okay now thanks to you <laughs> good day good evening to you and uh thank you you well you, you take you can take some responsibility for me getting the tags right
so we're getting here steadily. We're nearly there.
Hi, if there's anybody out there that has just joined joined this my stream for the first time, you're coming in at very much at the towards the end of this painting. This painting's been going on now since the middle of September, on and off. Um, I say on and off because th there's been at least two, two and a half weeks taken out of that time by um, my back going. And um, And so that it's not gone as fast as I would have liked. But as you can see here, it's nearly done. There's a lot of paint on this paper. And uh, it will soon be heading off on its long journey across the Atlantic Ocean to its new owner to Danny in Georgia Danny, Danny who tells me that he lives about 30 miles away from Musada which is where this um, where this scene is that I'm painting you might I don't know if you're interested but I, I, I found it very interesting to go and actually have a quick look on Google Maps around Mosado and it doesn't take you very long, it's tiny, but it, it uh, gives you an idea of, um, of sort of where, of where the scene is that I'm painting. This is my, this is the bit that I like. This is when you can see the painting finally taking on its final, its final form. I like that a lot. I like to, <laughs> this is the time where I look back and I think, oh my God, what have I done? Or I look back and I think, did I do that? Usually it's the, the latter, thank goodness. But um, see if I can uh, take a bit of the green paint out under here. Yeah, I can. This is the that's it. This is this where we get to debunk the the myth that watercolour is difficult because you, once you put it on, that's it. You can do an awful lot with watercolour by taking it off as well as putting it on. better more three-dimensional this 
baby across here, the other one. Sometimes I will put you know, dark details on to these headlights with with the pigment pens, but in this instance, as is often the case, the the darks aren't black; they're they're grey. So if I use the pigment pens, it would. It would be it gives a completely the wrong feel. So I'm just working with bits of grey that I'm picking up off the off the palette that I've used in other areas of the painting, and just using that just to just to lay in these very fine lines around the uh, edges of the headlight with a nice fine fine tipped brush
there. I'm getting there indeed. Um, just realised I've not spoken for ages. But that's, I'm afraid that happens once I start getting into these final last details. My, I'm, I'm so uh, determined to get them sharp and get them right and not to miss anything either. Um, luckily, I, look, <laughs> luckily, um, though she would say I didn't actually um, respond like that sometimes, but luckily my wife has got eagle eyes when it comes to these things. She can see any kind of fault or something I've missed or things that are wrong or whatever. So she'll look over this and she'll tell me everything that I've missed and I'll go over it and <laughs> sort it out. Uh, it can be really irritating sometimes, but I know in the end it's, uh, it's right, it's a good thing because, you know, there's no point sending it all the way to America unless it's right. Let's put a let's put an under layer on a first wash of transparent yellow under here. Let that um, let that dry. Same goes for here. Put it on and let it dry. The same goes for down here. This little indicator down here. Let's let those dry for a second. They are nearly there. They are tiny, tiny, tiny little things. I'm sure that I will need to sort of titivate like this bit here there's a little white line along the edge here that shouldn't be there let's get rid of that that looks better sometimes it's quite nice to have a sparkle of the white paper glinting through at other times it's totally wrong Oh, I picked up this brush to do something particular. Can I remember what it was? No. There's a reason for picking up a fine brush. What would that be? Hmm. I know, I remember. Nothing brings a sky to life more than a couple of birds in the sky. Uh, and so I've just added right at the right at the top of the painting up here, I've just added a couple of birds. And it just adds a little bit more life to the picture. Alright, let's um Let's see. Uh, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Let's just. 
just get the um, these indicators sorted. Right, so, for the moment, I think that's it. Um, I'll probably spot things that I've missed. As the uh, as the as I stare at it, and I'm sure that Jane, when she comes home, will take one look at it and go, "That's not right. That's not right. That's not right." But until then, I think that is as far as I can take this at this very moment. What I am going to do now, an exciting little bit that I'm going to do now, and you can watch me do it is I'm going to take off the masking tape. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the full overhead camera so you can see the effect. Let's get rid of the let's get rid of that baby. Uh, you can actually see now the whole painting. And we will now remove the masking tape that has been on here now for about five weeks, something like that. Now it's very conveniently, extremely low tack. So there's no danger at all of this ripping the, let's move that of this ripping the, the paper in any way. What it will do is it will leave us with a very nice
sharp line outlining the image which always looks much better here and there because because it's so low tack I've had to take the precaution of stapling it into staple it down at the at the corners to keep it uh, in place because it was always going to be on for a, a two or three weeks anyway and as, as you probably noticed it's been on for longer than that if it was ordinary masking tape at this point it could be a nightmare because it could have been on so long that it doesn't behave properly when you try and take it off but this is this is nice this is good stuff that uh, this works let's just take that off there there we go and you can see now if i pop this back where it was square it up as much as I possibly can for you you've got a, a bit of a there we are if I hold it up there uh, you can square it because I've got the board on a tilt of course because you always work on watercolors on a tilt but there there it is Lulu at Masala once I've uh, once I know that it's finished, I will sign it down in this bottom corner here, and uh, then we can see about packing it up to move off to send it on a very treacherous long journey. That's the bit I hate because you do all this work on it. Customers paid for it. Customers looking forward to getting it. And it's got to go in an airplane across the Atlantic Ocean. And sometimes the journey can be a bit mysterious. The last one I sent to America, I sent to Texas, and it left this country within a, a day or so and arrived in the USA but for reasons known only to the uh, parcel postal service or whatever in America it spent over a week just sitting in Chicago before it carried on on its journey down to Texas so it's always a bit of an unknown luckily I in all the many many years that I've been painting and sending pictures to people. Um, I've only had two calamities, which is pretty good, I suppose, really. Um, one wasn't the postal service's fault at all. One was uh, the, the customer had got the wrong address in PayPal and they paid me by PayPal and I sent it to the address that PayPal gave me and it was the wrong address and we never saw it again so I had, I repainted the whole painting for them and they did it they, and sent it to them. Um, the other one was many years ago and it was a big painting it was my goodness it was more than four times the size of this one. It was a very big painting. There you go. You can see my hands. I'll give you an idea of scale. Um, it was more than four times the size of this one. It was huge. And I finished it. And it had been paid for. It was a lot of money. And uh, I sent it off to a printer to have prints made. And I packaged it up as carefully as I could in a postage tube and a metal. Uh, put 
these big ends on it that screwed on the tube, wrapped it all in brown paper, loads and loads of tape on it. Um, and you thought, that's it, that's as safe as I can make it. And then the courier drove over it, which wasn't, <laughs> wasn't very good at all, uh, which was just a, a disaster, but never mind. Well, it was a long time ago. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. I think I can t safely say that we now have Lulu at Masala. Um, so I'm more or less ready for sending off to her new home. Thank you very much for sticking with me. It's, I know it's been a long haul, this one. Uh, the next painting that I do will hopefully take a lot less time than this. And, um, of course, if you would like me to do a painting for you, please, please, please get in touch. Um, Christmas is on the way. They make really good gifts for someone very, very special. Um, you cannot get anything more personal, really, than a painting that is done especially for you of a place that you love, something that means something to you. So, um, thank you again for sticking with me and please feel free to leave your comments under the video. I shall be posting an image of this finished painting uh, onto uh, the internet pretty much straight away. So, you know, take a look at that. Probably be better than the image that you can see on the screen at the moment. And uh, I shall... See you all very, very, very again. Yeah. Brain isn't working. Mouth's not working. I shall see you again very, very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.